or something completely different. <laughs> Columbia, Houston is with you through Yarmouth for about eight minutes. Houston. Chad, I've got a question for you for the uh, flight surgeon type. Okay, we're listening. Okay, reference uh, Bob Sinker's sore throat. Uh, he's been taking erythrobicin, which is what Jeff Davis prescribed for him before a liftoff, and uh, he's been taking it for the last couple of days. It's not sitting well with him, he doesn't think, and uh, wants to see if they've got any suggestions. Houston Franklin. Uh, it looks like um, EML is still not operating. We're we're, we are evaluating it here on the ground. We'd like you to leave it just as it is for right now, and we'll get back with you later about it. Okay, thanks, Shannon. We copy that. Uh, Pinky's going to give you a look at that uh, multiplier, too. Okay, we're looking. We see it.
and who we confer with you and with uh, Pinky Pitcher there. Okay, thank you.
this is the first time this has been performed, so the guys uh, over at Building 37 would like to hear. Uh, we've been running consistently with a pressure in the mid-20 ranges, but uh, just now, now that we're in flight day three, the pressure is starting to come down into the low 20s. If you'd pass that on, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. We'll pass that on. Columbia, Houston. Go ahead, Shannon. We haven't heard anything today, and we were just curious about uh, UVX, about the status of the door, and if you had anything additional to say about the status of Relays 12, 13, and 14. Okay, uh, Shannon, the door is still open. Uh, we, Relay 14, I think, is the only one of those three that we have looked at, and the status has not changed on those. Okay, we copy that. Thanks, Juan. And uh, Shannon, we're going to have Bob talk to you briefly about uh, what we've been doing, what he's been up to so far, and what we've seen with the IR camera. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, we had the IR camera powered up for Rev 4. Charlie got it turned on, and uh, that was our first along with it. We got some interesting pictures coming over South America, although the cloud cover and turn uh, I think we, uh, I don't think we got Ruiz, but there were bright spots on the, on the picture that we believe probably represents the volcanic activity. So we're hopeful that we got some of that. We also got some good IR pictures of the SACCOM deploy, which worked out rather well. Uh, they didn't show any thruster activity, which is what I know my friends back home are looking for. But if there were mutation, then they should, shouldn't have seen any IR activity. that we have normally is, is tomorrow when we'll be doing a significant amount of our coverage in a variety of areas. And uh, so far it's looking good. Okay, we copy that. Thanks a lot. We'll pass that along.
which it was on the ground. Uh, you can also tell, Dr. Bill Thornton, that uh, on Sala and the other crewmen, uh, I was able to do his clinical characterization of SMS, including the temperature and pupillary size and the power, uh, as well as the eye hand tracking. Uh, he'll be happy to hear that to Dr. Bill Horn. Okay, we'll pass that along. Seems like you all have been very busy. We appreciate the report. In addition, I've been having a ball. Well, we're glad to know that. Okay, on uh, the image intensifier, I just uh, got it back together again and ran a test. As far as I can tell, uh, it's working exactly the same. It's about a 0% amplification. Okay, uh, George, we copied that, and we'd like you to try the same thing on the upper of those two.
ahead, George. So we're at Columbia. You weren't supposed to answer that. Uh, I, I just uh, got done playing with the intensifier again. Turning up the uh, the gain, I did it in three different in increments of three all the way up to max. Uh, made no difference. I'm still getting uh, you still get a green screen when you turn it on, uh, but there's just no intensification at all. Okay, we copy that, George. Uh, we'll get back to you in just a second. Okay. Ahead, Houston, Columbia. Go ahead, uh, Columbia. Roger, Shannon, you asked about uh, relays uh, 13 and 12, and uh, I just checked the uh, relay status, and 13 and 12 are still uh, showing uh, hyphens. Okay, we copy that, Franklin. Thank you. Columbia, Houston for George. Go ahead, Jan. The champ folks would like a little clarification of your last report. Um, as we understand it, you finished working at the second vertical pod, and then you uh, saw that it didn't work, and then you... Yeah, but it might work. Okay, thank you. We'll go into the flight deck. Mission control and that's the select TV right now. Okay, uh, we think so we see you coming across on the TV screen. And some people claim that they see you wave. Go 
Janet here. The IR uh, folks would be interested in knowing what game setting you had on the uh, IR camera that last pass. Oh, game setting was three, Shannon, for that one. Okay, thanks a lot, dude.
we'd like to be able to give you a running commentary, but uh, I'm not familiar enough with the area to do it, so I hope there's some, some uh, amateurs or experts down there who can help you guys out. Yeah, I think there are, and we're enjoying watching.
read the reading, read the writing on the sun shield. Well, I guess it's all still warm enough then. This is uh, one of the Freon lines uh, coming over the side where it connects from the radiator into the orbiter itself. Now. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, what they'd like you to do is to try the um, relays 12, 13, and 14. I had a dress up this uh, backup uh, APC, the Model 3, and if that doesn't work, take the Hitchhiker APC, which is Model 2A, and try addressing 12, 13, and 14, and then let us know that does anything. Okay, we copy that. Who's got a note for you? Okay, and I have a note for who? Oh, okay, all right. Shannon, the guys are telling me that you already know that we had previously tried the backup gas controller to look at relay 14. We'll be happy to go try it again and look at all of those relays and, uh, and then use the hitchhiker one also. And, and go ahead with your note. Okay, we realize that you've uh, already tried the backup uh, APC, but the ex folks just wanted to see it one more time. And the note for you, Hoot, is that we'd like you to review your cast and see what you think about uh, a reschedule of the experiment BTR dump over Hawaii at orbit 37 at MET 2 slash 06 45. Okay. 
happen if you should want that one, uh, Shannon. Okay, I think we're coming up to the flight deck.
2. Columbia. Columbia, Houston, go ahead. Roger, Shannon, we've tried uh, both the backup APC and the hitchhiker APC on the gas uh, controller, and uh, we get the same results on all, uh, on all two cases. Okay, thanks a lot, Franklin. Basically, uh, the uh, relays uh, 12, 13, and 14 are, are showing the same. Okay, we copy that, Franklin.
big internal waves off the coast of Africa here. Okay, we talked to them. Columbia, Houston, we're going to lose you Idris here in about a minute. We'll pick you up at uh, Yargity at 1.30. Okay, Shannon, we'll see you then. Columbia, Houston, we just wondered if we could get Mintec TV also. Shannon, we don't have anything set up right now. 
now, uh, we'll see what we can do. Oh, yeah. The uh, Orbit 2 uh, control team has begun uh, handover here in the Mission Control Center, and Mel Heflin and his flight controllers will assume flight control responsibility for our 61C shortly. The change of shift press conference with Flight Director Jay Green should occur on time at 8.30 Central Time, and uh, we're standing by now to uh, take some uh, TV of uh, VTR dump or uh, perhaps live cabin and cabin TV from uh, Columbia. Mission elapsed time is uh, two days, one hour, 57 minutes. It's Mission Control Houston. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, handover now complete here in the Mission Control Center. The Orbit 2 team now on board taking control of the mission with Flight Director Melt Hadlin. The change of shift briefing with the off-going Flight Director uh, Jay Green will be held at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time.
And we're currently receiving a VTR dump from Columbia at uh, MET, two days, two hours, three minutes. This is Mission Control. Columbia, Houston, a short hand over to Tedris shortly. Okay, yeah, welcome back. Thanks a lot. And by the way, as we wiped the sleep from our weary eyes this morning, we saw Columbia passing overhead the Houston guys. Good show. Great. Well, we were looking outside to watch the lights go by, and it's amazing how much detail you can see. Columbia, Houston with you, Tedris. Okay, Houston, we got your last clear on Tedris. Last clear also. Columbia, Houston, interrogative. We were wondering if anything was set up in the mid deck at all. Uh, not yet, Jim. I think uh, Pinky's working on that, though. Okay, thanks. No rush. Uh, when you get ready, just let us know. Okay, we think we'll have it in just a minute.
Courtney Houston, good live TV from the mid deck. Okay, thanks, Jim. your weather. I hope you're going to save some of this nice weather for us when we get back.
This is Mission Control Houston, MET, two days, two hours, 17 minutes. We are receiving a live television downlink of the mid-deck on Columbia. A reminder, at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, we will conduct the change of shift briefing with off-going flight director Jay Green. And Columbia currently orbiting over the northern part of Central America on orbit 34. This is Mission Control. Jim, we're going to start using the mid-deck camera for one of the student experiments, uh, so we'd like to keep command of the mid-deck camera. Uh, it's fine with us if you if you want to look over our shoulder on the mid-deck. That would be great. Thanks a lot. We'll just watch over your shoulder. Okay, so you can still select any of the ones you want, and we'll just, uh, we're going to, we'll aim it, we'll zoom it, uh, and do light with it and all that.
Uh, Jim, what we're going to do is uh, attempt to conduct the uh, paper fiber experiment, and uh, this is on behalf of uh, Daniel Abair, who's a student from Appleton, Wisconsin, and his uh, corporate sponsor is the James River Paper Company. And uh, well, what the purpose of the experiment is is to uh, try to remove gravity as one of the uh, free parameters in the uh, formation of fibers. So what we have here is a locker with uh, nine different uh, cylinders that contain some paper fibers. And uh, I'm sure you can't see that very well on television, but the paper fibers are in here. We'll get some uh, close-up pictures uh, as we do the experiment to show you later on. We'll shake this up and get the uh, fibers evenly distributed and then uh, try to compress the cylinder to remove the uh, fluid in which the fibers are suspended to make a, a paper mat. And the hope is that, that by doing this, we'll get uh, a more uniform paper uh, as the distribution of fibers will become more uniform uh, due to the lack of gravity. And uh, we'll conduct that experiment uh, now while you're watching it, if you like. Okay, that sounds great. I'm sure he's watching, and he, can, he has right to be proud. This is Mission Control Houston. We see uh, Steve Hawley, Mission Specialist, uh, working in the mid-deck on one of the um, student experiments, which is a part of the Shuttle Student Involvement Program. This particular experiment um, deals with the uh, formation of paper in microgravity. Okay, we just completed the first apparatus. Uh, there was just a little bit of free water, and we think we got the uh, paper mat compressed for you. You may have been able to uh, observe me trying to do the compression. That's, uh, that's a pretty good bit of exercise. I think I'm going to let uh, Dr. Nelson help me with, with some of these. That's firm. We did see that. I guess you can forego your treadmill today.
Transmission Control Houston, a reminder of the uh, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time change of shift briefing with the off-going flight director, Jay Green, will be conducted uh, in the Building 2 PAO briefing room. Again, that's uh, about five minutes from now, 8.30 a.m. Central. This is Mission Control.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, mission elapsed time two days, two hours, 44 minutes. A decision uh, is expected to be made uh, this morning sometime um, about possibly coming back one day early on mission. Uh, management officials uh, are currently uh, considering the uh, various impacts uh, for landing on Thursday. Uh, we do expect a decision um, uh, in approximately an hour. So preliminary steps are uh, being taken here in the Mission Control Center. Uh, payloads officers uh, looking at uh, uh, their data to see uh, what impact, if any, or any effects on the experiments would be if we do decide to come back one day early. Still receiving a live downlink from Columbia showing uh, Pinky Nelson and Steve Hawley working with uh, student experiment. We have about 12 and a half minutes remaining uh, through this Tedris pass. And uh, Columbia currently on orbit 34. This is mission control.
Okay, thanks, Jim. We'll pass that on to him. Glad it worked out. Jim, did you have TV hole pass on the, uh, on the paper file? We did have most of the TV downlink. We lost about the last uh, four minutes. Columbia Houston, good live TV now. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston. We are receiving a live television downlink right now from Columbia of um, Franklin Chang Diaz. Um, as we uh, get on over into uh, the uh, Tedros um, AOS, which is about two minutes from now, we uh, expect to get the uh, BTR dub of the orbiter tour. That should be around 9.36 um, 
a.m. Central Time. Houston will have a short drop out between Hawaii and Tedris. We'll see you at Tedris in one minute. Okay, we'll be ready. Okay, you like clear, Jim, and I'm going to switch languages now. Muy uh, buenos días a todos. Uh, good day. For all those of uh, South America and all those who speak uh, Spanish in the United States. Uh, right now, we're aboard uh, Colombia, and we're going over the uh, trajectory right now. And uh, over in uh, the most uh, important cities of South America and all of the uh, South America continent. During these two days of the mission, I've had the opportunity to accumulate a series of uh, different activities. I have put them on a tape so that you can uh, observe what actually goes on uh, aboard uh, the shuttle, how things are operated. And I would like to uh, immediately uh, uh, go on to uh, this magnetic tape so that all of you can observe what we've been doing in these last few days. Uh, right now, uh, we're on board the uh, vehicle. We have um, the lower uh, mid-deck and above uh, the aft flight deck. A process of uh, operating uh, the different uh, uh, portions of the orbit. Uh, here we can observe a uh, sleep restraint to see uh, how we can sleep in space. And uh, it is very comfortable to sleep in space in this way. Uh, the body uh, go, fits right into the sleeping bag, uh, and you can uh, yourself uh, restrain, restrain yourself. In uh, the aft flight deck, uh, we can observe the commander of the mission, uh, Ms., uh, Commander Gibson, and he is in charge of the uh, front part of uh, the orbiter in order to uh, operate uh, the shuttle. Um, at the right, uh, Charlie Hilton, who is the uh, co-pilot, uh, 
de la luz del sol que hasta cierto punto nos está eh, haciendo que la, la imagen se haga un poquito más oscura. Estas son de tomas en la parte trasera del puente. Uh, this is the, uh, the part of the F-flight deck where Steve Hawley um, is taking measurements with uh, the experiment UVX, which is uh, the experiment to uh, study uh, ultraviolet uh, of uh, the space environment. Uh, this is uh, the opposite portion of the vehicle where I am, operating uh, the lab, the MSL2. And also, uh, you can see through the windows, uh, the aft flight windows. Uh, uh, also, other uh, things such as, for instance, the curvature of the Earth. And uh, one can uh, uh, appreciate uh, the view and, and the uh, other portions of uh, the orbiter outside. Uh, now we can observe uh, the mid deck where um, George Nelson, Pinky, and I uh, are taking measurements right now. Uh, for the experiment to uh, study blood and for future missions uh, we will be able to proceed on with these experiments to study uh, the blood samples and we can see how uh, how it actually uh, behaves in a zero-g environment. Here we see also uh, certain compartments of fluid with uh, pure water. And uh, we can eject uh, other liquids and, and observe uh, with the motion, uh, how uh, it oscillates. And we can observe uh, how we have uh, bubbles form. And uh, we may observe also uh, other uh, uh, experiments that are very uh, interesting for other students and to watch the uh, how uh, these uh, different uh, materials behave. And uh, we can see out the windows uh, the tail of the orbiter. And here's another experiment and for uh, this is an experiment that might interest other students of older age of an older age uh, to see how we can uh, produce different types for in space and we have, uh, it, it, they are in little uh, containers.
de, de aleadores de, uh, de dif materiales. Different uh, types of materials. Y estas son las últimas tomas que teníamos hoy. Queríamos darle una idea de cómo uno puede flotar. And one can observe uh, how we uh, work with these samples. And uh, you can observe uh, uh, the overall uh, environment of space. Uh, the operations uh, in space uh, in these last two days uh, have been um, very busy. You can observe the form of life. Uh, we live in very good uh, conditions. We have been eating very well. And, uh, and today, this has been one of the best days. Uh, as far as health-wise. And we hope that the next two days that we are here will uh, be even more interesting and even easier. Uh, right now, uh, we are going over the uh, continent of South America. And we can observe it from uh, Spain, all of these uh, Latin American countries. And for all of the uh, Hispanic people, I send them a special uh, hello from space and tell them that I uh, have a lot of affection towards them and I want to send my best. Uh, see you later. Okay, Jim, uh, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, back in English now. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. It was very interesting. It's nice to see all your smiling faces. Keep up the good work. You're doing a good job. We have about eight and a half minutes left uh, in this Tedris Pass at uh, MET, two days, six hours, four minutes. This is Mission Control.
This is Mission Control Houston. We are seeing a live television downlink now. Columbia Houston with you through Tejas with a good live downlink camera, Charlie. Okay, Jim, and we're uh, getting set up to send you the, uh, the VTR. Right now, 
uh, just replacing uh, the valve cover and uh, put the bicycle pump back in and then we'll start uh, turning everything on. obvious to you, but the first thing we had to do uh, once we got the pressure pump back up was connect it to AC power, and that's what I'm doing right now. Then we'll turn the power on. Uh, again, check all the temperatures on the heaters as well as uh, on each of the alloys, and there are two alloy samples in. As I said, they were about 74 degrees when we got ready to get started. Uh, once I checked that, we turned heater A on, and it, was, it only required heater A for the experiment. The temperatures came up very uh, uniformly, and it took a total of, well, I let it run for 18 minutes, and actually got three temperatures stabilized at greater than uh, 136, and the final temperatures of the alloys, the two alloys, was 139 degrees on each. Uh, what we then do is actually turn the heaters off and uh, remove the AC power from the experiment, and we go into what I call a pneumatic or uh, a hydraulic part of the experiment. So I'm going to give you another fast forward and actually get... Uh, get you to the, to the shutdown part. Uh, I'd like to apologize to Will. We were trying to get, uh, you know, everything, the, the injection, um, kind of as a quick explanation of what happens. Once we get the alloys uh, heated up and get them in a molten state, then we actually uh, open up uh, a valve that lets air. We use air in this case, I guess, for safety, in, as opposed to an inert gas like argon for which the experiment was designed. And we actually uh, inject the air under pressure into the molten metal and uh, then close the valve that lets the air uh, reside in the molten metal and it probably breaks up into numerous bubbles or forms a big bubble. And it's sort of like making uh, a honeycomb structure just in, in one fell swoop. We then removed all the sources of heat and let the pyramid cool down and we gave them about a 30, 30 minute cool period. So hopefully uh, everything got back into solidified form with uh, maximum number of air bubbles in it. And what Rachel hopes to do with this thing is be able to quickly make a honeycomb structure, lightweight, uh, kind of good strength, uh, at lower cost than it costs you to, to presently make a honeycomb structure as you would find in a modern airplane wing or something of that sort, uh, like here in the show. I'm going to fast forward again just to the shutdown, Jim, and that'll be it. Roger. Yeah, going up in the watch. And go to Houston, we'd like Jim, I hope I clarified any questions that uh, may have arisen when I asked the questions about what to do with the AC power switch. Uh, we actually shut the, the electrical part of the experiment down by taking the power off the power cable. And uh, I guess I was just a little curious as to why we didn't turn the electrical power switch off and do it that way. But it seems like everything went well. We understand and that, no problems. And we'd like star pair Charlie 2. OK, we copied star pair Charlie 2 for the, for the alignment. OK, this is uh, the finishing touches here. We've taken the electrical power cable, and we're getting ready to stow that. And uh, once that's complete, we'll just close up, shut off the electrical power switch, and close the uh, release valve, and that essentially saves the experiment, puts it to bed. We'll uh, close the latch, or close the lid, and that'll be it. So I'll just kind of let you look at that without listening to me. Charlie, thank you very much for the report, and uh, it was very interesting. Thanks a lot. Okay, 
Absolutely, that's it. So uh, I guess you guys can have the, the exterior cameras and the, the flight deck camera if you want it. Now go ahead and secure the VTR. We copy that. Mission, Mission Control Houston, uh, we just uh, are receiving live television downlink, and a little bit earlier uh, we saw a uh, VTR dump uh, that uh, Charlie Bolden conducted earlier. He uh, walked us through uh, one of the uh, student experiments um, involving the argon injection. Uh, argon injection experiment. Uh, is a materials uh, processing experiment. And a little earlier than uh, before uh, Charlie Bolden's VTR death, we heard from um, Representative Bill Nelson uh, explaining, uh, giving us an update and explaining the uh, protein experiment that he's involved with. Uh, that experiment being the uh, handheld protein crystal growth. This uh, particular crystal growth experiment operation uh, involves the use of four pieces of equipment uh, to attempt to uh, to grow about uh, 60 different types of crystals.
This is Mission Control Houston, uh, ground controllers uh, taking control of the cameras uh, located in the cargo bay, uh, scanning the uh, gas bridge that uh, is carrying the uh, 12 getaway canisters. And uh, one of the canisters, uh, which we saw a little earlier, uh, that's a part of the um, ultraviolet experiment. Uh, uh, the lid has not closed on that. Um, it ha has, uh, however, not affected the operation uh, of the experiment data. Columbia now getting ready to uh, cross over the western coast of South America. This is Mission Control.
Columbia, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Can we slew camera B slightly? This mission control, Houston, uh, ground controllers uh, taking control of the cameras, uh, locating cargo bay, uh, scanning the uh, gas bridge that uh, is carrying the uh, 12 getaway canisters. And uh, one of the canisters, uh, which we saw a little earlier, uh, that's a part of the um, ultraviolet experiment. Uh, uh, the lid has not closed on that. Um, it ha has, uh, however, not affected the operation uh, of the experiment data. In Columbia, now getting ready to uh, cross over the western coast of South America. This is Mission Control. Thank you for joining us for the uh, 61C change of shift briefing with the off-plane flight director, Milt Heflin. Uh, Milt, if you'd like to go ahead, please. Okay, Janet, thank you. The, uh, of course, the big news today, uh, in fact, that we're going to uh, uh, bring the uh, crew back home a day early. I'm sure you heard that uh, announced earlier by my Capcom, Jim Weatherby. Uh, certainly big news for the, the crew as well. Um, I think uh, some of the, let me, let me go through the reasons why we're doing that. Um, first of all, as, as you know, there is a, is a need to get 102 back to the Cape for a turnaround for the Astro Mission 61E. That is a concern. Uh, the uh, primary mission objectives for 61C, significant amount of that work has been done, not all of it of course, but 
but quite a lot of it has been done. And, and as you know, we've been struggling with some of the experiments, uh, particularly MSL and CHAMP. Uh, in, in the CHAMP case, for example, it's, uh, uh, I'm sure the CHAMP folks would like to stay on orbit longer and perhaps get some more exposures of Halley's Comet without the intensifier. But at the same time, they're going to fly again, so it makes good sense to get the CHAMP hardware back on the ground so you can investigate it and fix it for the, uh, the follow-on flights. Uh, I'm told that there's a, uh, a weather front, uh, I guess, nearing the west coast that could come into play at KSC on Saturday. Uh, so by giving ourselves uh, an opportunity to deorbit and come home on Thursday, in essence, we bought ourselves two opportunities, uh, Thursday and Friday. It all, when you, when you put all that together, it just makes good, good sense to go ahead, and, uh, uh, go ahead and do that. So that's what we're, we're planning to do. And I do have some times here, preliminary times, um, that I can give you if you, uh, if you like. They're all very preliminary on, on deorbit uh, burn times and landing time, and we will be glad to give those to you later if you like. Um, sort of going through the, uh, the status of the, the payloads, uh, uh, MSL, uh, we have tried repeatedly to operate portions of the material science lab, and it's, it's still not clear how all that's been going. It hasn't been going well. And, um, with either the uh, EML portion or the ADSF, and uh, uh, we do continue to try to operate in the, the system. Um, and that's, a, of course, another uh, piece of hardware or like hardware that will fly on subsequent missions, and so I'm sure those folks are going to be anxious to find out what, what has been their problems. Uh, hitchhiker, um, hitchhiker we, we haven't talked a lot about Hitchhiker. Things have been going fairly well with them. Uh, of course, just by shortening the flight one day, they lose one day's activities, and uh, that's not a big get to them. We talked about CHAMP. Uh, makes good sense to get the hardware on the ground and fix it. Uh, UVX, uh, UVX, it appears we will lose one day to take. We had 10 scheduled for the flight, um, and we will lose one day to take. Um, and, of course, they have targets of uh, various priorities, and we've done uh, the, the, the priority work for them. So, that's not a real big hit as well. And, uh, of course, the, the, the rest of the getaway specials that are just wanting more time on orbit, they lose a, they lose a day. Um, and let's see. That's probably it. Um, I asked uh, SATCOM status. I didn't, uh, apparently things are going just fine with SATCOM. I did not get a report. Uh, I asked my payload officer as I was leaving. He hadn't heard anything to me other than that everything was going real well. Uh, of course, we spent, I spent most of my shift with my team looking at the impacts of, uh, of coming home on Thursday and, and trying to wrestle with some of the priorities and trade-offs of, uh, of uh, just some of the experiments and that sort of thing and working in the normal things we do for, uh, for DR prep. And uh, we have a preliminary plan laid out that's been passed on to the planning team. They'll massage that tonight. Uh, the entry team will come on uh, console this evening, I think around 10 or 11. Uh, to do their normal uh, the day before entry shift. So that's where we stand. I'll be glad to try to answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, we'll open up for questions here in Houston. Carlos Byers, please. It was a disappointment for Columbia's crew who have had more than their fair share of bad luck on this mission. The decision has just been made to bring you back one day early. That is Thursday. Jim, you broke up a little bit. I understand you're going to extend us for two days? Okay, uh, Jim, we, we copy. You're going to bring us down a day early. The news came as no real surprise. A month-long delay in the launch of this mission because of technical problems and bad weather had put the Columbia on a tight schedule. Its next launch is March the 6th, and NASA officials now need every extra minute they can get to prepare the shuttle for its next flight. Today, the crew went ahead with a series of experiments, including medical tests, and probe ultraviolet radiation from deep space. The malfunction of equipment being used to record Halley's Comet has been another disappointment for this flight. The mission next March will give NASA second chance to observe the comet from space.